fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> covered wagon to the coming of the railroad, the history of the western United States is a history of progress. And no man did more to bring civilization to the frontier than the masked rider of the plains. It was his courageous fight for law and order against overwhelming odds that made possible the development of the great new country. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Jack Fisher, just 24, and for the past three months, sole owner of the short line Goldville, Shawnee, and Western Railroad, got to his feet as his sweetheart, Alice Blanchard, prepared to leave his office and... This hasn't been much of a visit. <laughs> I have to go, Jack. I have so many things to do, I don't know where to begin. I just stopped in to see how you were getting along. Well, I guess you've seen. Jack, listen. Well? Do you know what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'd say Everything. After all the fool mistakes I've made so far. No, Jack, there's just one thing wrong. That all? You've got no confidence in yourself. <laughs> My heavens, Jack, if your mistakes don't mean anything. They've cost me money. But that doesn't count as long as you don't lose more. Really, it doesn't. It, it's just experience. How many men do you think there are who could take over the management of a business without training, as you have, and do any better? Why not one in a thousand? All you've got to do, Jack, is to tell yourself you can't be beaten. And you won't be. Please try. I want so much to be proud of you. No, I haven't given up yet. And you won't either. I'm sure of it. Oh, my gracious. Two o'clock. I have to run. Wait, I... Oh, Jack, I can't. I'll see you tonight. Bye. Goodbye. Hmm. Maintenance costs. How in the dickens can anybody expect me to... Oh. Hello. Afternoon. Don't get up. I wasn't. I don't think I heard you knock, either. No? <laughs> well, I can explain that. I didn't. That's what I thought. On your dignity, eh? Looks as if owning a jerkwater railroad's kind of going to your head. When you're at your office, do you let people walk in on you whenever they please? When I'm at... Oh, recognize me, huh? You're Blake Atwood. Right. What do you want here? Want? I don't imagine you came all the way from Milford just to amuse yourself. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Fisher... I've been meaning to call on you ever since your pa died and left you this line of yours three months ago. Thought maybe I'd better warn you off. Warn me off? I've got a wagon outfit that carries freight between here and Milford. I guess you know that. I do. That sort of puts us in the same line of business. 
We've just got different ways of handling it, that's all. I use horses and wagons. You have engines and rails. So? I was going to warn you not to build track to Milford. I don't like competition. <laughs> but I see it won't be needed. What do you mean? I've had a look at you. Huh? From what I can see, a sprout as green as you couldn't compete with the town halfwit. Why, you... Sit down, sit down. Fisher, if you wanted a fight, I could handle you with one hand. <laughs> but shucks, what have we got to quarrel about? We're not going to get in each other's way. Anyhow, I reckon you won't get in mine. That would take some nerve. You think I haven't any? Oh, now, don't get mad. I guess you've got enough gumption for things like... Well, like feeding yourself and going to bed nights without your ma being there to tuck you in, things like that. <laughs> but you sure wouldn't try anything it'd take a man to put across, would you? No. Well, Blake, if you finish, you listen to me. Yeah? Maybe this railroad's going to do some things that'll surprise you. Now, Fisher, don't try to bluff me. I've played too much poker. All right, listen to this. Two weeks ago, I signed contracts with eight of your best customers in Milford. They came here and told us what they thought of the service you were giving them. They asked us to build a branch to Milford. And those contracts specify that if that branch is completed within six months, every pound of freight they ship will be routed over this line. That's so? Now, what do you think of my nerve? Well, good day. Just one second. You haven't answered my question. Well, maybe your nerve's all right, Fisher. But I sure can't say as much for your head, you crazy fool. You've told me just what I wanted to know. <laughs> hey, Blake, come back here. You needn't think Howdy, that... Jack. Oh, hello, Spooner. Come on in. Jack, I just seen Blake Atwood going out of here. Did you tell him we plan to build a Milford? Well, I... That is, he said... And you did. It got me so mad I had Don't to. Don't you know when we signed them contracts with those fellas at Milford, there was penalties fixed to them? Yeah, but... They know what Atwood will do when he finds out what they've done. He'll make them pay plenty to haul their freight. Uh, if we ain't built the line to Milford in six months, he can make it so tough for them, they'll just about have to go out of business. That's the reason we agreed to pay him cash if we weren't ready when we figured. Well, we're going to build, aren't we? We haven't had the chance to buy our right away yet. Then let's get at it. After what you've let out to Atwood, that land's going to go sky high. But if we... Lem Dawson owns the land we have to have. You wait and see. This is going to cost us thousands over what it should have. We can't afford it. All right, then if we can't, we won't build. And pay the penalties on them contracts instead? <laughs> Son, that wouldn't cost us much less. We'd have nothing to show for it. Nope, they've got us both coming and going. I... I'm sorry, Fred, it... Well, he got me so mad, I just didn't take time to think. That's what he schemed for. He must have come here suspicion we was planning something. Just another one of my fool mistakes. Well, Jack, I, I won't say it ain't. But it's your cash you're spending. All I know is, in all the time I was superintendent of this line under your paw, he never made one mistake that was even half so bad. <laughs> Board, boss. I'm all set to go if you are. Whip up those horses. Get back to Milford just as fast as you can. Right, boss. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get along with you. Did you see young Fisher, boss? I saw him. Find out anything? He talked. Yeah? Got him so mad he didn't know what he was saying. He figures to build. Hmm, what are you going to do about it? Talk to Lem Dawson before he does. Yeah? Get up there. Get up. But you and Lem didn't get along. You ain't aiming to try and buy his land before the railroad does, are you? He wouldn't sell. Not to me, anyhow. Then what's good seeing him going to do? He'll sell to Fisher. But I don't know. Only when he knows why Fisher wants his land, he'll hold out for plenty. Uh Uh-huh. I happen to know Fisher hasn't any too much reserve capital. When he's bought the land, he'll have just enough money left to build the branch. If he should run into trouble laying track, if it cost him more than he expects it to... (laughs) He'll go bust, huh? And I think he'll be willing to listen to a reasonable offer. Huh? You'd buy his company? At my price. Well, boss, what in the land of Goshen did you do with the railroad? Sell it. I don't sell it. I think the Kansas Pacific would just as soon pick it up as a feeder line if they could buy it reasonably. Then how'd you profit? <laughs> I'd keep the land Dawson won't sell to me, but we'll sell to Fisher. <laughs> so that's your scheme. Get up, you critters. Get up. I'm interested in just one thing, keeping out competition. There's just one approach to Milford that a railroad could use. That's over the land Dawson now owns. He won't sell it to me, so I'll go after it my own way. I 
And once it's mine, there'll be no railroad, fishers, or any other building to Milford till I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not an easy fellow to beat, Leaf. I guess young Fisher won't be long finding it out. Get up. Get up, you critter. Get up. Get up. Several days later, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were riding along the edge of a swamp on Lem Dawson's property, halfway between Milford and Goldville. Suddenly, the masked man reined his horse to a stop. Oh, 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 there, Silver. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, oh, fella. Oh, oh. What matter? Here, Tonto. Follow me. Come on, boy. Uh, get him up, Scout. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Come here. Watch it, Tonto. Careful of the swamp. Uh, watch out. What you see? Take a look at this swamp water. Uh-huh. Here. Now look. Oh, it looked funny. Tonto, remember that old fellow we helped when he lost almost all his herd to Rustler some years ago? The old fellow living in the ranch this side of Milford? Uh, him named Dawson. Right. And all this range belongs to him. Uh, what you mean? He's a rich man, Kimasabi. Richer than he probably knows. Why that? That's oil floating there. Come on. Back to the horses. You... You tell them. Just as quickly as we can. <laughs> yep. Ready? Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry, boy. <laughs> But as the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced across country, old Lem Dawson and his wife stood in the doorway of their ranch house, saying goodbye to young Jack Fisher. Well, young fella, you needn't feel put out because I held you up the way I did. <laughs> Reckon you'd have done the same to me if it had been the other way around. Well, perhaps you're right, Lem. There's no hard feelings. Oh, now Lem and me can buy a house in town and take it easy for the rest of our lives, just like we've been wanting to do. I'm glad you can. Fisher? Yeah? Let me give you a word of advice before you leave, will you? Why, sure. Watch out for Blake Atwood. Huh? I told you, you know, it was through him I found out why you had to have my land. Well, he's not going to just sit by and leave you to build your line in here without doing his best to stop you. And he ain't one to do his fighting fair and square, neither. I won't say no more. That ought to be enough. Thank you. I'll remember that. Well, I have to be going. Yeah, bye. Bye. Good day. Good day, ma'am. Bye. Yep. Get up there, boy. Get up. Oh, Lim, just think of all that money he gave us. <laughs> Turned the right good deal, didn't it? <laughs> well, that's the end of our worrying days. I... Silver, Who's silver. that? Lim, look. Say, ain't that... It's the Long Ranger and Tonto. Well, by gosh. Hi there. Hi. Hello there. Rain up. Oh, hold on, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, it's gone. Oh, oh, boy. My oh. lands, what about you folks here? Yep. <coughs> Hello, Mrs. Dawson. Hello. Hello. Lim. Yes? Yeah? Tonto and I were riding near that swamp at the west edge of your range and discovered something we thought you should know. <laughs> what you mean is, friend, you found something on what used to be my land. What's that? See that fella riding way off there? I do. That's young Jack Fisher. Owns the railroad over to Goldville since his pa died. Now he's figuring on building a branch to Milford. You mean that you... <laughs> he just bought me out before you came. But we pined... Wait, Tonto. Uh... But uh, what was it you found, did you say? Never mind, Lem. That's news that'll have to wait. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few minutes.
Now to continue our story. When they had left Dawson and his wife and had made camp not far away, the Lone Ranger explained to Tonto why he had said nothing about their discovery of oil. It wasn't because I feared Lem would be disappointed after having sold his land to Jack Fisher, Tonto. Lem and his wife are getting on in years. The money they received is more than ample to care for them the rest of their lives. And they have no close kin to inherit anything that may be left. Mm. And Lem isn't like some men we've known who desire money for its own sake, regardless of whether they can use it wisely or not. But on the other hand, if Jack learned that the land he had purchased was worth a fortune for the oil it contains, he might drop his other plans. His motive for building would be gone. He'd have a fortune without lifting a hand. You want him, Bill? Right. It would mean prosperity and progress. So, for the present, we keep what we've discovered a secret between us. Oh, Tonto, not talk. Good. Neither shall I. And what do now? You heard Lem mention Blake Atwood. Uh-huh. Atwood will fight Jack. He'll do everything in his power to hold back progress, block the railroad, in order to keep his present stranglehold on the freighting business of the district. Isn't that right? Well, we're going to stay on hand and see that he doesn't succeed. Several weeks went by. Then one afternoon, a horseman raced into Milford drew his horse to a sliding stop before Blake Atwood's office, threw himself from the saddle, and ran to the door. Mr. Atwood. Oh, you late. Well, what's happened? Fisher started to build. You sure? He's been getting supplies together at Goldville for the past two weeks. He's already had the route surveyed. Now he's hiring crews. They start laying track tomorrow. And Fisher's got the capital to go through with it, eh? I asked around like you told me to. He can just make it, and that's all. Fine. Well, what are you going to do? Stop him. How? Bribe his men. Scare those that won't be bribed. Tear up his track as fast as it's laid. Do? I'll stop that fellow if it costs me every penny I have to my name. In the weeks that followed, Atwood made good his threat. The difficulties encountered by the Goldville, Shawnee, and Western became the talk of the territory. Its crews deserted almost as rapidly as they were hired. Gangs of roughnecks, everyone knew to be in the pay of Atwood, scared those who would not quit voluntarily. Miles of track were laid, only to be torn up soon after. And Jack Fisher was in the depths of despair. This can't go on, I tell you. Fred, you know as well as I do what it's costing us. I've borrowed every cent my credit's good for. No one's going to loan me another dollar. And track hasn't been laid even halfway to Milford yet. Given up, Jack? I don't know what to do. Jack, you have to go on. You must. Why, if you quit now, you'll lose everything. I know. Uh, I feel like you do, Miss Blanchard. I want Jack to keep fighting. Maybe it's partly because if he don't, I'll be out of a job. But just the same, there's no denying we're up against a tough situation. There must be something you can do. Those gangs, can't your men fight too? There's just the rub. Sure, they could fight. They could find the fellas to fight with. But I... Excuse me, miss. Let me make it plain. You see, them gangs know where to find our men any time they want. Naturally, our crews have to stick to their business and lay in steel. But that doesn't hold for afterwards, roughnecks. They can choose their time to fight. And it's always when they got us outnumbered. They can cut and run whenever they want. They can hide wherever they want. To say we should fight back is just like telling us to beat up on fellas you can't get your hands on. It's a heap easier said than done. Yes, I suppose, but, but even so. Who's that? I don't know. Expecting someone? No. I... Come in. Hello. Atwood. Well, Fisher, this time you see I did knock before coming. You've got your nerve showing up here, Atwood. That right? You dirty. Careful. Don't start accusing anybody of anything you can't prove. What do you want here? A talk with you. You'll send these people out. They stay here. Jack, we can... No. Anything Atwood has to say to me can be said in front of you and Fred. Or it can't be said at all. Well, Atwood? Well, if that's the way you want it, it doesn't make any real difference to me. I'm waiting. I'm here to make you an offer. Huh? From what I've seen and heard, you haven't been having much luck with this branch line you're trying to build. <laughs> in fact, I've heard you may not be able to complete it. Now, if you care to sell your entire line, I mean, with all its assets, I'll buy it. Atwood... Fisher wouldn't sell his line to you if you offered him a million. Wait, Fred. Atwood, how much are you offering? $200,000. One half down, the remainder over a period of two years. What? Uh, what kind of an offer do you call that? Ain't half what the line's worth. In this you... case, it isn't what it's worth. It's what you can get. You can't Don't get... forget the way things are going. Fisher won't have anything to sell for much longer. It will belong to his creditors. I'm offering enough to let him pay his obligations and give him a decent amount over that for himself. And you can take your offer and... Fred, don't forget I'm the one to decide this. Huh? You mean to say you'd, you'd even consider it? Maybe I'd better. You must be out of your head. Well, hasn't he told the truth? Isn't it a fact that we can't go on the way we've been? You can keep on fighting. And end up broke. That wouldn't have scared your paw. He understood this business. He started the Goldville, Shawnee, and Weston. He built it up. 
Why should I be expected to manage it as well as he did? And you'll sell? I... No, you can't. But if... Alice... If you sell, I'm breaking our engagement. I want a man for a husband, not a coward. It's not being a coward just trying to save what you can. I think it is. But can't you see my side of it? Can't you see if I sell, it's just because I think it's best for us both? No. Well, Fisher, what do you say? I... Well, you'll have to give me some time to make up my mind. Can't give you much. Wait too long and I won't be interested. Then you'll go bust and save nothing. Give me until... until tomorrow. Tomorrow, huh? Well, I can do that, I guess. I'll stay in town tonight. Drop in about this time tomorrow. You'd better have your mind made up. Jack, you... You're not really going to sell, are you? I... I don't know whether I am or not. Well, Fisher, you can do what you please about this. But if you take up Atwood's offer, I won't call it selling. I'll call it quitting. Oh, oh, there's a little bit. Oh, oh, what? Oh, Tonto. Uh, what matter? Call him, Scout. Uh, here's Scout. It looks as though Jack may quit after all. I let the fight go this far because I thought it best for Jack if he could win it by himself. Uh, now we've got to interfere. Tell Jack about oil? No, we're calling on Lem Dawson. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, old fellow. Come on. <laughs> Well, doggone. That what you started to tell me the other day when you changed your mind? It is, Lem. But you'd already sold your land, so it couldn't help you to know about the oil. And I had reasons of my own for not wanting Jack Fisher to learn about it yet. That's a funny thing. You know, a fellow from the East once told me there might be oil on my land somewhere. But I never gave it much thought. You can take my word for it, there is. Oh, I ain't doubting it. And like you figured, I ain't so sorry I missed out on it. After all, me and my wife have got all the cash we'll ever need and some over. But will you do as I have asked you? Sure I will. You helped me once, didn't you? All I'd like to know is why you think it ought to be done this way, instead of going straight to Jack and telling him what he's got. Because what Jack needs, more than money even, is confidence in himself. Hmm, I see. Of course, he'll know he didn't suspicion there was oil on the land. Maybe and maybe not. It's human nature to tell yourself that when you're lucky, it's due to your shrewdness. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And even if he doesn't give himself credit for shrewdness, it'll help him a lot to know that other people do. Sure, sure. Well, I'll be there. Good. And you and Tonto? We'll be there, too. Adios. So long. Back to camp, Tonto. Uh-huh. Get him up, Scout. Get him on, Silver. <laughs> The following day, accompanied by his lawyer, Blake Atwood went to Jack's office. He was confident that the young man's opposition was broken and that the deal was as good as closed. It shouldn't take much of your time, Sawyer. I've made him a flat offer. Appraisal of the property won't be necessary. You seem mighty competent that he's going to sell Atwood. Yeah, I am. Ain't no one here. Come along. That's Fisher's office there. He's expecting you? Sure. Come in. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, right. hey, what have you brought Sawyer along for? Well, naturally, I want a witness of my own to this deal. <laughs> Jack hasn't said he'd sell yet. Sure, I know he hasn't, but he's going to. Isn't that right, Fisher? I... Why can't you give him more time to decide? Why should I? He knows he can't go on. He might just as well get out from under now as later. He could have beat you if you hadn't tricked him. Tricked him? This is just between us, Alan. I don't care. That isn't going to stop me from telling him what I think of what he did. Yeah. <laughs> what did I do? You tricked Jack into telling you he planned to build this branch line. You fixed it so that he had to pay five times as much for that land as he would have had to do otherwise. If you hadn't made him spend that money, he'd have had plenty to fight you with. That's neither here nor there. The fact remains that Jack's beat and he knows he's beat. You should know it. I said I'd give you until the day to make up your mind. Have you? I... I have. No. No, Jack, no. <laughs> you... You'll pay me half down? Sure. And the rest of it. Oh, there you are, you rotten crook. Oh, yeah, if I was just ten years younger, I'd pick you up and break you in two. Leave Jack alone. Well, what in thunder's the matter, Mr. Dawson? I... What's the matter? Why, doggone you, all the time you was pretending to want my land just for your railroad. You knew there was oil there. Oh, what? What's that? Hey, you cheated me out of a fortune. You even used that wood here to do it. Making him believe all you was after was a right away. Listen, Mr. Dawson. I ain't listening. You're listening to me. Hmm. Figure you're pretty slick, don't you? You tell that wood you're going to build. That wood tells me. 
When you come around to buy, I make you pay what I think the land is worth to you for your doggone railroad. But you knew there was oil there, and you was plenty glad to pay me a little extra, so I'd grab it up without suspicion and nothing else. Jack, how wonderful. Why didn't you tell us? But I... I... <laughs> I'll be switched. Your paw will be plenty proud to hear this deal. <laughs> and it was Atwood himself helped you put it across. Listen, I... But it ain't legal, I tell you. I'm going to have that land back. Sawyer, I'm putting it up to you. Is it right for him to cheat me that way? Well, Lem, I'm afraid it is. It wasn't up to him to explain why he wanted your land. And you can't claim fraud. If he said it was because he wanted it for a right of way, you have to admit he's using it for exactly that purpose. Lem. Yeah? Remember when I bought from you and you said you hoped there'd be no hard feelings because you'd ask me more than you thought the land was worth then? Remember saying it was just business? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Then but... that should work both ways. Just the same, I... However, if you really feel it was sharp practice... Tell me what you think I owe, and if it's fair, maybe we can get together. Well, if you put it like that, maybe you're right. Uh, just forget about it. But I... Hold on a second. Huh? You can't make a fool out of me like this. You heard what Lem said, that she used me to trick him. What of it? I won't stand for it. I'll be ruined if your line goes through. You let me spend money to fight you all this time, knowing that you could get enough net oil whenever you need it to bust me. So you admit you've been fighting a railroad. I'll show you... A mask man. You got just what you were asking for. Me. Outside with you. Keep going. Who's that mask man? Where'd he come from? <laughs> What's it matter? He sure hustled Atwood out of here in a hurry. Jack, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Jack, uh, I'll tell you what I like about this deal most of all. Huh? You didn't only prove you could be mighty slick yourself when you wanted to, but you showed you could keep still about it afterwards. <laughs> you didn't even tell us what you had up your sleeve. Maybe you folks are giving me credit for more than I deserve. <laughs> Won't even brag about it, eh? But here's a promise. If anybody quits the next time I've got a fight on my hands, you can bet your bottom dollar it won't be me. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>